Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be, you don't bring me flowers anymore. Well, there was a sap, sappy love song. It was, uh, who was it, Neil Diamond and Barbara Streisand did it. I think it was back, back in the 70s. And it's basically singing about a breakup that's happening and the fact that they're not doing those little things for each other that they once did when they were in love and they were in a happy relationship. And so what we're going to talk about today is breakups, why they happen, what you can do to turn one around if you're in the process of that, or how to get the person to want to come back to you if your relationship is ended, or if you're dating somebody and things are going well, you can obviously learn from some of the common mistakes guys make that lead to breakups happening when you're in a long-term relationship or a marriage. But before we get into it, I got a quote that I wrote I want to share with you. And it says, breakups happen slowly. At some point, one or both people who are in relationship with either stop putting their best foot forward. They may get more caught up in earning a living and providing than courting each other properly, making each other feel loved and supported. When two people fall in love, they are focused on what they like about each other. Towards the end of the relationship, they are focused on what they don't like or can't stand about each other. People who got into a relationship thinking it would make them happy tend to withdraw and stop making an effort after the honeymoon period is over and the infatuation has worn off. They are left with the realization that the other person is not the source of their happiness and they either don't love themselves or their lives. Good healthy relationships come from two people who love themselves, stand up for themselves, are open to a relationship, want a relationship, are ready for a relationship, who are emotionally and physically comfortable with themselves, and who love their lives and are looking for someone to share their completeness with. Sometimes when you are not ready, it is better to remain single so you can figure out who you are and what you want when you are not defined by another person. So let's go ahead and jump in the guy's email. He says, hey coach, thanks for your work and your insight. My girlfriend, who's 48 years old and a stunning beauty, and I, who am also 48, broke up with me just before Christmas. We were living together for a year. The reason that she gave, and she had mentioned it several times before, usually guys don't listen. They hear those things and it's like, ah, he didn't just say that. Ah, she doesn't mean that. Was that I wasn't giving her what she needed, i.e. make her feel special and not complimenting her enough. So you basically were not dating her and courting her properly, making her feel beautiful, making her feel loved, making her feel special, doing those little things, planning fun dates, hanging out, having fun and hooking up together like you did when you first got together. And when I talk to guys that are having problems in their marriage or their relationships and they're like my wife's not in love with me anymore or she's not attracted to me anymore or she's complaining that I'm not making her happy not making her feel special when we start talking about what they're doing and how often they go they take her out on dates and you know if they've got kids you know that obviously affects it guys tend to just get in this mindset of I've just got to work and earn a living and provide the money and pay all the bills and provide a great environment and everything will be great and take care of itself but what they don't realize is that now that they're no longer trying to win their girlfriend or get her to fall in love because they're obviously married or already in a relationship, they got kids together, they start focusing on being a, a good provider and just earning money, being a money mule, if you will. And that's not why she got together with him in the first place. She got together because there was a love story that was happening between the two of them. And what also tends to happen, just like I shared in the quote, is a lot of times the guys will do everything right thinking, hey, if I just get this perfect girl, because I was at that place in my life once. I thought if I get the perfect woman, then I'm going to be happy. And I finally figured it out. I finally got to the point where I had a really great girl in my life, and I realized I still wasn't fucking happy. And that's tough when you realize that because then you realize no matter how much you give in your relationship, you're still having to deal with the fact that you're just not a happy person. You don't enjoy your life. Maybe your career sucks or there's things that are going on in your business. Maybe you're having problems with your business partners, whatever it happens to be. And those things affect you. And then what, what happens is the guy realizes, fuck, you know, this, I got a great woman in my life, but I'm still that happy. And then so therefore he, he tends to withdraw within himself to try to figure out what's wrong. 
And the woman's trying to reach him, like, where'd you go? What's going on? And, like, I remember I was going through a difficult time with a, a woman that I was, a, I was, was my long-term girlfriend. And I was having a, a, a difficult time. And it's just like, I was just tending to withdraw and sit in the couch and think and contemplate. And she could tell that I was somewhere else. And, and she was just, like, really trying her hardest to try to reach me to, because she obviously wanted to help. In some way, but it was really I had a lot of major life decisions at the time that I needed to make, and it was just something I had to arrive to on my own. And she was just well, she was awesome enough to realize, let me just back off and give him space, and then he can kind of come to that kind of figure out what he needs to figure out. But the problems arise where that lasts for a few weeks or maybe a couple of months is fine, but when it goes on month after month, year after year, and then it gets to the point where the woman realizes no matter how much she tells him she wants or she's not happy, it's like things just don't change because the guy's just focused on providing or he tries to argue why what he's doing is, is acceptable. And a lot of times a big part of that is the communication, is that the woman doesn't understand that she has to speak to her man in a logical tone, that he's logically thinking type of being and you got to give them specific step-by-step -step instructions and vice versa the guy doesn't understand when it's time just to listen and be there and be supportive for his woman or when it's time to give her advice and most of the time she starts talking about something he thinks oh great she's got a problem i gotta fix this and he starts giving her solutions and she gets pissed off because all she wants to do is have him listen so it's very helpful if guys learn to ask do you you want me just to listen or do you want my advice? Makes it simple. I talk about this at length in my book. For those of you who haven't read it 10 to 15 times yet, you need to get busy because you need to learn these things. Because even if you're successful at getting her to fall in love with you, you've got to learn and recognize the signs to notice when she's starting to fall out of love with you and take some corrective action so you're not like this guy where you get dumped, your relationship's over, and then you're like, oh shit, I need to figure out how to get her back now. Because it's a lot harder to get her back than it is to turn things around when she's not happy and she's saying that you're not making her feel special. He says, she would say that I want to hear it from you and not guys on the street. In other words, compliments. So guys in the street are going, damn, you're beautiful, you're hot, you're gorgeous, you have great eyes or you have a great body or whatever it happens to be. And the husband, the man who's in her life or the boyfriend, the guy that's in her life that she's supposed to be getting those things from never mentions it, never brings it up. So he's either taking it for granted or maybe he's just realized that he's just unhappy. And that can be a very difficult thing when a man or a woman realizes that despite how awesome their relationship is, the bottom line is they're still not happy as a person, as a human being. And they have to work to correct that first and foremost before anything. Because it's like you can't give away what you don't have for yourself. And so if you don't have self-love, if you're not happy, you feel like you're lacking. You don't feel like you have enough to give to other people. And so you tend to withdraw because you literally don't feel like you can give time or attention or your presence to somebody else because you're already, your cup's not overflowing as it is. He says, I admit that I fucked up and I have no skills in that area and until I found your work and now my eyes are open. And we were fighting quite a bit about my past and she drilled me about my past relationships and why they broke up and who left. That's what the interesting thing is. Is like when I talk to guys, and we go and we talk about the last two, three, you know, or even all of their relationships in their lives. It's like all the women leave for the same exact reason. It's the same kind of pattern, and that's what's beneficial about reading my book. Is you can start to realize where you were going wrong in your relationships that led to the breakup because it's. The, it's the type of thing that happens slowly over time. It's not like you do something wrong one week and boom, it's over. It's the kind of thing that happens over many months. And so it's a slow, gradual thing. And she slowly starts to fall out of love. She slowly starts to get more and more unhappy and bitchier as, as time goes by until it's too late. It's like the analogy of the frog in the bo boiling pot of water. It's like the heat's slowly getting turned up and the guy doesn't realize it until it's too late and he boils to death. And then the relationship is over. He says, she would use my past against me and she stopped having anal sex with me after she found out I did it with anal sex with some other girl that I was with before her that really wasn't that special to me, which she just couldn't understand why I would do that 
was some $2 whore, which were her actual words. And all of this, this is an issue here basically because she thought she was special. She thought you were the only one that you ever did that with. And then she finds out that you were doing it with a girl you really didn't care about. And so in her mind, what she makes the association with is because obviously that's a pretty naughty and dirty thing and, and a taboo thing in society that you know the guy doesn't do anal sex with his girl. And so obviously some, some people are going to feel a little embarrassed. Or, and so she realizes that you had sex previously with a woman who you really didn't care about and therefore lately that's how you've been making her feel – and so therefore, maybe you only have anal sex that's degrading with women that you don't care about. And obviously she's thinking, you don't care about me. And that's the association she makes. And that's why she brings it up. That's what she's really mad about because now she doesn't feel special. Oh, well, you'll just have anal sex with anybody. Because that's where she's already – that's where her mindset's at. Because you haven't been dating her and courting her proper, properly and making her feel loved, making her feel beautiful – Obviously, at some point, you just kind of stop dating, and you probably every weekend came, Valentine's came day, or, or your anniversary came around. And what happened? You said, "Hey, you want to order a pizza tonight?" <laughs> you order a pizza, and you have some beers, and you watch some TV. Pretty much the same thing that you do every night. Therefore, the woman makes a connection. Like if you really cared about me and you really love me, you would take me out and you'd plan special dates and activities and fun things. They don't have to be extravagant and expensive. They could just be fun things that you just take 10 minutes of your time to plan out. Because if you really cared, you would show through your actions that you loved them in that way. So for the guys, you got to figure out what's the reason. Why are you no longer putting your best foot forward? Is it because you fell out of love with her? Is it because you realized you just weren't a happy person? And therefore you feel like, what's the fucking point? No matter how happy I make her, I'm still fucking miserable. You got to figure these things out and you got to figure out what you're doing wrong because if you value the relationship, if you don't take corrective action, eventually she's going to leave you and end the relationship. He says, I've left, let some other stupid things slip which probably started her not seeing me in the same light when we met. So basically you started doing and saying things that made you look weak and undesirable because you figured, hey, we're in a long-term relationship together so she ain't going anywhere. And you get lazy, you get complacent, you don't go to the gym anymore because you're, yeah, I'm kind of tired, I don't feel like going this week. And then that turns into weeks and months without going to the gym. Before you know it, you've gained 20, 30, 40 pounds and you got a nice old bowling ball belly. He says, I was being aloof, busting her chops and not being there for her every second in the beginning. In other words, you were being confident, you were being indifferent, you were being a man who was going about his purpose and his life. But you were courting her properly at least. He says, when we first started dating, her idea was no sex for the first six dates to see if I was serious. I guess she got used to that after her 18 year marriage ended and she was out there dating. He says, a few months into our, our relationship, or the great start that we had, she asked me if I would be into swinging. I told her, no, I don't want to share you and she said she was just kidding. Ugh, he says. Well, you know what? There's a lot of truth in jest. And so when a woman says something like that to you, are, are you saying that you're interested in swinging, that you're interested in having other sexual partners? Just be honest. Tell me what you're thinking. Because the relationship is, it's all about meeting each other's needs. You should always dig. You should, it's always good to ask a question or answer a question with a question, especially a loaded one like that. He says, then... Then she tells me that during the six no dates that we were not having sex, she slept with a guy that she was dating before me. He says, I didn't care because I wasn't committed to her early, but what the fuck? Why tell me about it now? So we both fucked up some to a degree, but she blames the breakup 100% on me. Well, you're the one that's the leader. Therefore, the buck stops with the president. I mean, at the end of the day, the woman's going to say, hey, it's your fault. You're supposed to be the leader. She's the one that submits to your will. She's the one that you fill up emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically. Therefore, you're the leader. You're the tip of the spear, metaphorically speaking. 
plan was for me to move out at the end of the year and she was just so pissed at me and I was clueless how to fix things. I thought it was for the best. I'd been out since the end of December and I did miss her at first because I was getting over my anger of having to find a new place that she couldn't try to help fix it. Also, another thing is sometimes maybe at some point you realized your goals and values were not aligned. So therefore, you decided, hey, maybe it's best to get out of this relationship because that happens as well. Because a lot of times guys will realize that this girl's great and everything, but you know what? I'm kind of bored and I'm not really happy and she's not what I really want. But things aren't bad between us, so I'll just see if things get any better. And they just kind of hang into it. Because I talk to a lot of people that have been in relationships, especially for 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years. And especially guys who are in unhappy relationships. I talk to guys and they're, they're literally with – like well, I remember one guy. He's with his wife 30 fucking years. And he knew after year 12 that it was foobard. I mean it just – and so almost two decades later, he stayed in it. Two decades. And he's like, I made myself so miserable. But you know what? He fucking made up for it, dude. He was like a hound dog in a fucking whorehouse, man. He went to town. And good for him because I like to see that because then he gets back on his feet, realizes that he is attractive and he can attract other women. He can have other experiences and he fucking happily sowed his oats. Because up until that point, he was really with the same woman since he was a teenager. So he really never had much sexual variety in his life because he was always with his wife. And you know, here he is, almost 60 years old at this point, and he's rocking out with his cock out and having a good time and having multiple partners. It's like good for him. He says, we didn't speak except through text here and there days after I left, but there were several all-day text wars. Well, that's helpful. You know, you're trying to win an argument. That, that that's not going to help because even if you win you still lose because the bottom line is you both want to be loved by the other person and your needs aren't being met and so it's like a lot of times people think when a relationship ends oh if, if I can if the other person is hurting more than me I'm going to feel better if I'm able to get over this breakup quicker I'm going to feel like I got I pulled one over on them I, I bested them it's not a competition it's all about it's a team sport it's a team activity being in a relationship together. He says, I wasn't begging for her to come back or anything, and I just wanted her to admit her part in our downfall. She then, in the heat of the text war, she told me, I'm totally over you. I'm happy and already dating mature executive men who know when they got a good thing. And now it's like it's like a little boy and the and the girl on the playground yelling at each other when when the, the the crushes don't work out that they have. He says that really hurt and it got to me and I still didn't beg her to come back but showed me I showed some weakness. <laughs> he says I replied to that and I know I should have just been all great. I hope it works out. I replied poor guy, good luck. And then I sent her this is funny. He says I sent her a pic that I have of her without makeup and told her to show it to them because that's what you really look like. It's like, come on, man. It's like now he's like these two almost 50-year-old adults are acting like five and six-year-olds in a playground. I know you are, but what am I? I'm rubber, you're glue, whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you. I know you are, but what am I? Shut up. Shut Don't go up. Prices do. Take my advice and shut up too. That's what basically is going on here at this point. He says, we didn't text for about anything for about a week. And then I text her, sorry for all those mean texts and I just wanted her to be happy. And she replied, I hope you find a great girl. And I replied, you know, I wish you the best too. And that was the last contact that we had, which was the end of January. I was starting to feel better and was started getting out there and trying to date. And I jumped back on the online dating site where I met her and who came up as a match for me. Yep, she did. She was totally online every time I went on. I didn't message her or anything and I couldn't stand to see her online all the time so I, I killed that account. Why, dude? Oh, you just block it. Block it so she can't see you and you can't see her. Then you don't have to fucking worry about it. You shouldn't let things like that deter you from moving on with your life. Now you've taken yourself out of the game and you've eliminated one possibility to help you find a better and more suitable replacement. 
She had said things like, there are a lot of great girls in town you can meet, or think about all these fights that we had when we, because when we break up, it'll be easier, or I bet you're going to get some younger chick who will take your bullshit. Hey, that's a great idea. Thanks for the tip. I might just might do that, honey. You're awesome. Thanks for looking out for me. Can you help me read the tea leaves here? Is this dead? Do I have a chance with her if I practice no contact? Well, I promise you if you continue to stalk her that you're only going to make yourself look like a total wussy and you're not going to get anywhere because if you've been following me for any period of time, I go through countless emails where guys do that. They beg, they plead, they stalk her, they try to convince her to change her mind and it never fucking works. It's only when the guy finally stands up for himself and says, fuck this, you you walked away from the best thing that ever happened to you and yeah, I fucked up but you know what? You unilaterally changed the terms of our relationship and you weren't willing to do anything about it. He says, our, her birthday is in a few weeks and I know you will tell me no birthday wishes. He says, I haven't contacted her since early February, which was that last text I shared. Stop reaching out to her, dude. You got to walk and never look back. That means never looking back. It doesn't mean you get 10 steps down the road and go, uh, I'm going to send her a text because I'm afraid she's not going to contact me. The idea is that the reason you're walking away is because she changed the terms of your relationship and as a man, you're going to say, you know what? You're pushing me too far. I'm not interested in that and have a nice life. Not that you need to say that to her, but your actions, your walking away and the fact that you stop 100% of all calling, texting, and pursuing will tell everything that you need to communicate through your actions. As a matter of fact, let me just read a brief email that another coaching client just sent me this guy I talked to him earlier in the week and he's been trying to get this girlfriend of his that dumped him about six weeks ago back and I finally got him to just back off and be indifferent and go about his life and now she's slowly been creeping back over to him and the gym and listen to what happens. Listen how fucking powerful this is. He totally took his power back by listening to what I taught. He says, hey Corey, thanks for the coaching session yesterday. Here's a quick update. It's funny how attraction works. Within five hours after getting off the phone with you, I bumped into, let's call her Samantha. I like the Samantha name. I know a couple of Samanthas and they're really fucking hot. He says, I bumped into Samantha. This was the girl at the gym who we talked about. This is the girl that blew me off six weeks ago. He says, and I was centered and strong. And notice what she does. He says, she asked why I hadn't called, LOL. In other words, you know what? You haven't been calling me anymore. You don't bring me flowers anymore. You haven't called anymore and that's starting to bother me. In other words, you know what? I really wish you would call and want to take me out on a date. In other words, what you got to realize, the reason she's bringing this up is I'd really like it if you would create a fun-filled romantic opportunity for sex to happen because I'm really starting to miss you and I'm starting to think I really fucked up by breaking up with you and blowing you off. And this girl, she is, he sent a picture. She is fucking beautiful, dude. Good fucking job. Got beautiful eyes, beautiful long blonde hair. Yes, indeedy. So here's, <laughs> so after she go, she says, why haven't you called? And he says, I told her that she changed the terms of our relationship and I was out. So in other words, it's like, no thanks. Thanks for no thanks. He says, walk and never look back. Anyways, long story short, I took her home and nailed her twice last night and once this morning. Here's the attached picture. Thanks, Corey. Good for you, dude. This is what happens. You know, this girl was blowing him off, wanted nothing to do with him. He goes on about his life. He's smiling. He's happy. He's excited. He's hanging out. He's having fun. He's hooking up with new ladies. And she walks up to him and he just treats her like any other girl that he happens to be bored with. You know, in other words, he's just tired of her BS. He's not investing any energy. And it causes, and this is what women do. Notice what she says. Why haven't you called? She doesn't say, hey, why don't you take me out on a date and seduce me? I'm not going to say that because think about it. So why haven't you called? She doesn't have to risk any rejection. That's the kind of thing you'd say to a friend, right? So it communicates, it bothers me. So if the woman comes up to you, if she calls you, if she texts you, if she emails you after you, she, she blew you off and why haven't you called me? 
She's putting herself into his orbit. Why? Because she's hoping that he still has some potential interest and that maybe she can rekindle something with him. So what does he do? He makes a date. He creates an opportunity for sex to happen. He creates a date right on the spot. The date starts then. That is the best way. If you got time, dude, make a date right then and there in the spot or meet up a couple hours later. Why not? When are you free to get together? Well, I'm not doing anything tonight. Fucking great. Let's get together and meet up for a glass of wine or hey, why don't you follow me back to my place? What, you know, whatever it happens to be. Hang out, have fun, hook up. He did what I taught him to do and he had great results. So if you'd like to get to some of the same kinds of success in your own life and get your girl back, ding, ding, do that. Or if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session with yours truly. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab, which will be at the top of the screen on any page of my website, and just follow the instructions. If you'd like to get a copy of my either the Kindle ebook or the paperback version of my book, on my website, underneath the email sign-up box, there's a box that, that has a picture of my book. If you click on that, it'll take you right to the Amazon.com servers. You can either download it or you can purchase the paperback edition. And I will talk to you soon.